Buongiorno a tutti e welcome to this very nice interview for the Art Club. Today I'm so happy that my guest is my very big old friend Enrico Dini. So let me say two words about Enrico Dini because you know I met Enrico Dini almost 10 years ago. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good story because 10 years ago one of one of our friends, no Mimmo, called me and say, I have to introduce you a person. And they said, who is this person? This person is someone, it's crazy one. This guy is um, someone that is very good in printing and he's printing the house, the housing. They say, wow, he's printing the house. It was the first time that I, I, I know, I heard some, this thing, printing the house. And, you know, after, after a couple of weeks, Enrico came to visit, uh, you came in Puglia. I remember that you came maybe in Bari, no remember. And I said, okay. I, I, I need to know this guy, I need to know Enrico. And, you know, we met in Trani, remember? And from them, we started a very wonderful, uh, you know, friendship because I met a guy that was not also a very, I could, I could say a true scientist, but also someone that is also very good, what I used to say, entrepreneurial spirit. Someone that was willing to, not only know to, to search, to make a search, but to do. And, you know, it was to be a courageous to try to do something here in Italy. Then we can speak about this. But, you know, this guy was a guy that was uh, making an incredible innovation in 3D printing when 3D printing was unknown for almost everyone and was also a very great entrepreneur and was trying to develop such technology in Italy 10 years ago was was not so easy to do such things. Also today, I, I, I'm afraid it's not easy to do such thing in Italy. But then we became friends. We had we shared a lot of time together. And uh, I asked Enrico to be part of our advisory board member. And he, today, Enrico is one of our most important members of our advisory board. And so, Enrico, this is so good to speak with you. And it's... I'm very, I'm very happy if you can share with us just a little bit about your story, how you became such, you know, searcher, such scientist. Tell me a little bit about your story. Well, first of all, Antonio, thanks for this great uh, introduction. Nice. And uh, thanks for uh, in, uh, involving in your uh, extraordinary initiative. Thank you very much. Uh, to which I am more than honored to become a member Thank you. of your advisory board. About my story, this is a story, my story uh, comes from a long time ago because uh, I'm an inventor, uh, not by chance. Uh, you need a, a ground and a background to grow seeds of uh, of anything, in this case of uh, creativity and innovation. Yeah. In my case, uh, I come from Ponte d'Era, particularly from the Piaggio village of Ponte d'Era, where I grew, surrounded by uh, a team of talentous and engineers uh, who was developing the Vespa scooter, an iconic uh, um, product uh, of uh, Italy of the 60s and then the 50s. So I've been, uh, as a child, the witness uh, of, uh, of, the, of the great development uh, of our country in uh, most of the sector of the industry. So I have had the privilege to have, uh, first of all, my father was a brilliant engineer and brilliant scientist was a professor at, uh, of automotive engineering, head of research and development at Piaggio Vehicle Europei, and my father was the right arm of Corradino Dascanio, the inventor of the Vespa, and uh, what more important, the inventor of the, the first helicopter who flied in Ciampino Airport uh, in the 30s. Wow. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's truly incredible. And I grew, uh, 40 years later, 30 years later, I attended the uh, University of the Civil Engineering. And I, I'm a civil engineer, but I, because I'm a, I have a very creative, uh, eclectic soul, I privileged, when I graduate, 
to enter into a more innovative field uh, 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 was really truly fascinating for me, which is uh, robotic and automation. It's hmm. because of my elder brother Ricardo when. Uh, when I came back from Mexico to re after this uh, sort of refreshing trip uh, after a long uh, period of studies to understand about my way, I joined this company who was involved in robotics for shoes. Uh, so basically I put on hold my expertise and my background in civil engineering and uh, without any skill in uh, programming, uh, uh, programmable controller, mechanical engineering, uh, and mechatronics, uh, I entered into this experience uh, um, practically, uh, looking at uh, what um, my uh, colleagues, uh, me mechanical and electronic uh, engineers and uh, technicians, who was uh, uh, involved in assembling and wiring and coupling the, these great, incredible machines that in the early 90s used to be delivered to uh, shoe factories here in Italy. So the, the first 15 years of my of my of my work has been involved in robotics. I've been came, I became a robotic integrator integrator of Kuka Robot, and uh, at some point uh, when the, in Italy there was a big crisis uh, uh, around the the early 2000 when. Uh, was absolutely clear that it was almost impossible to maintain production in Italy, and entrepreneurs decided to, to move away the production, and uh, automation became an optional, and uh, having automatized the people uh, in uh, Romania or in Albania or in Albania or in Vietnam or so forth, that I had to reinvent myself because uh, uh, the, the matter on the table when you, uh, when you, uh, when you leave uh, is to survive at first. So let's say that the driver of the change for me has been a matter of uh, surviving and to invent myself. <laughs> uh, as a visionary uh, man, I had a clear perception of, was, of what was uh, the, the, next, uh, the next part uh, of my country a sort of a de industrialization of the country, uh, a big crisis in, all, in most of the sector, within those also building construction. And I started wondering what I might do uh, in, uh, to help my country, to, to, because I have a, a very um, empathic soul with uh, problems and giving people the means uh, to invent and uh, reinvent their themselves. And I realized that maybe the, the, the less advanced field of, uh, of the industry was building construction. And uh, in 2004, I, I was trying, among the several attempts to reinvent myself, I was having a demonstration of a small 3D printer at the Piaggio factory. My aim at that time was to become a reseller, a dealer of uh, a very nice uh, 3D printer invented by the M Massachusetts Institute of Technology um, uh, in Massachusetts. Um, I was giving this demonstration of this very small, uh, let's say, three-dimensional photocopier. Was a <laughs> was a powder depositioning system coupled to a to an inkjet printer with an additional axis, uh, a z-axis, to layer powder and print uh, um, a binder uh, in section uh, to produce three-dimensional objects. Uh, well, that morning of March 2004, um, I looking to this very slow machine, because printing a piston uh, uh, in front of the technician of Piaggio was a very painful process for a, a seller because the machine was a very slow. I, I realized that, that that process applied at a larger scale might be suitable to, to print a large objects like homes, for instance. This is how the story began. It began as a provocation, as a yeah. provocation of scaling up a process which was invented for 
the rapid prototyping of maquettes of small objects. And since then, started a descent to the hell or an ascendant to haven, depending the point of view. Uh, and um, starting making, going on the beach, uh, I went to the beach, uh, the beach of, uh, of Monte Argentario Peninsula. Maybe someone in Italy knows the, the beach of La Feniglia, uh, where there is a fantastic sand uh, to which I used to play when I was, uh, was a child, making fantastic sand castle. And I, uh, on a Sunday morning, I, I mimic uh, the process uh, of, uh, um, the, of this uh, 3D printer machine. Uh, just layering sand and pouring water selectively on a certain area. And then I printed my first 3D printed sand castle ever. Wow, <laughs> it's a great process. <laughs> and uh, at that point, uh, uh, I decided, I, I told to a friend of mine about this crazy idea uh, of printing homes. And uh, one night, which has been a very let's say, very, very important night of my life. I got a phone call from uh, one friend, a, a contractor, a builder, friend of this, my friend, Moreno, and uh, who asked me, Enrico, uh, Moreno told me that uh, you might print homes in 3D. What is true in this sentence? <laughs> what is true? And I said, yeah. yes, uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> In principle, everything is true. Uh, it, this is just a manufacturing process. It's, uh, it's a matter of uh, being so brave to undertake a challenge of, uh, uh, first of all, building a, a working prototype, uh, making some trials. <laughs> and uh, grabbing time from my, from my work uh, in the free time and month by month also grabbing also my real work time, we started to we arrange the, the um, a robotic arm uh, onto which we applied uh, a, a pulling head. At that time, I didn't believe we might print uh, was pre premature to print uh, concrete. I supposed to use a sand and as a bind uh, epoxy resins. And uh, in um, long 2005, we we printed. Uh, a first uh, mock-up of a column, uh, a Doric column, a Greek column, a portion, just a portion. And uh, this was the first 3D printed object out of conglomerate, out of sand. Wow. And, uh, and since then, uh, um, I released, I filed one patent, which has been a framework patent, was the first patent on the planet uh, um, in hypothesizing the way of making a rasterized 3D printing of buildings. So wow. uh, was a really like having invented and discovered a new, a new planet somehow. That was the yeah. born of the revolution of 3D printing buildings which you see today. Yes. And, um, and, um, and since then, the, the, the level of investment and commitment go, grew grew uh, in, uh, at uh, one order of scale at a time, from 100 euros to 1,000 euros to 10,000 euros to 100,000 euros and up to 1 million euros, and uh, uh, trying to, to attract the attention of the investors. And in 2006, uh, I set up the first company on the planet, Monolight UK Limited, which uh, uh, scope was to print buildings in 3D, and uh, started a very painful process, process of uh, rising the attention of the building industry, which is a very conservative field, and rising the attention of uh, private equities, and business angel, venture capital, not very successfully, to be honest. And uh, so I decided to, to do everything on my own, uh, actually yeah. using uh, family resources. And in 2008, yeah. we uh, here in Booty, where I am today, yeah. uh, helped by my brother Ricardo, we printed the first conglomerate building structure ever, which is uh, the yeah. Radiolaria Pavilion, designed by yes. Oriente. And yeah. uh, everything started from there. And yeah. today, I can say uh, that from uh, this uh, pioneering uh, exploration, uh, today, 
uh, I've been uh, uh, had a lot of uh, I inspired many many people uh, ranging yeah. in all the field of the industry from uh, let's say from the students, the architects, uh, um, cement producers, uh, contractors, builders, uh, developers, uh, universities, and um, and today there is a 100 billion uh, dollars market which is uh, growing very fast. Today, there are several tens of new companies involved in 3D printing building, not applying my process, to be honest, because my process has been the catalyst to activate another process, which is more simple. It's called 3D printing by extrusion system, which honestly is not a printing system, which belongs to the sphere of the voxel, of the pixel and dot per inches. In this case, it's a plotter, but journalists uh, and in the, in the common language, uh, this is called 3D printing. And uh, basically, I'm the man who created a new market uh, into the building construction. That's uh, me. Wow. This is, uh, I mean, this is an impressive story. I know very well because, you know, I know this story since the beginning and I saw, you know, the pain. I saw especially the pain of uh, the your path you know because your story is so emblematic because i could say that we see everything that we that the people that are willing to make uh, things the people that are willing to make you know entrepreneurs they are they don't see what is behind such you know such uh, development and unfortunately this is something that is not also teached this is why we are in the art club you know we are going to create a what I call in a holistic, holistic process, where we are going to not only focus our attention, you know, to the technique, you know, to the engineering. Yes, we are going to have labs of 3D printing, labs of biotechnology, but we are going to work also in these two parts that I call logic, critical thinking, and even metaphysics. I know because this is exactly what you said, because, you know, your your you know your path was uh, you said for chance you know was born almost for chance but it was i think a deep deep introspection about yourself deep introspection what who, who you are you know you 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 went in mexico you come back from mexico so you got through a lot of internal process and uh, this is something that someone has to at least to say this is important you have to go into such things because otherwise you can you, you can do something that is not aligned with yourself and to to find your to find your path is something that needs an effort of uh, not also not also external knowledge which is science but also internal knowledge which we have which we have called exactly metaphysics so your story it's a uh, it's really emblematic, emblematic of what we are trying. We are we are trying to do. But if I may, if I may, can also I, I can also ask you to exp no to say something about um, yes the internal process that you are living through. So you yes you you your you, your development was a was is a catalyst was a catalyst for then a new a whole new. You know, development, a giant, we could say a giant market today. But uh, how you, my question is, how you survived the most difficult moment of this path? How many times you were close to say, okay, I'm done. I could not do this anymore. I need money. I need to survive. I need to, you know, you, you, I need to, to care to my family. So how you overcame such such a moment this is something that is i know it's personal but i was I'm willing to to ask you so uh thank you antonio how did i survive well it's uh, all of us uh, um, how can i say um you must survive there is no chance there is no it's not a question to survive you you must so it's uh, everybody uh, at some point uh, enter into a field which is very dangerous and scary. So uh, from your inside, you have two options. 
give up exactly. and lose yourself. Yes. And as we say in Italy, chi si ferma è perduto. Yes, exactly. And a um, lot of, many people does, but this is not, uh, uh, this does, doesn't belong to our uh, human being. Uh, we as human uh, must go forward. Uh, some, the representation of the world which we have around our, our, our side is, uh, is depending uh, from us, how we depict uh, our day. So when yes. we wake up and we feel so depressed, we feel uh, uh, having a, looking to the world like a blind... Yes. Uh, no energy, no open, energy. No head, a lot of doors closed, uh, shut down. Okay. That is the moment where you have to uh, find the, the momentum to say, okay, all these doors are blind. You have two options. You, you must at least find a very, very small way, an escape way to pass through, which might be very dirty, uh, ugly, but you have to pass through because the only way to escape from a blind black situation and uh, if you do that, you will surely succeed to move on. Um, so the, you, I trust that everybody must react. Yeah, it's tough to react, uh, but uh, you must because there are no escape ways. And uh, mm, after that, there is a bigger challenge. Because in this path, uh, which can be uh, from the start to the stable of uh, this, uh, uh, of, uh, of living a life uh, in danger somehow, yeah. there is something that uh, change at some point. Change, you change, yes. yourself change in this path. You yes. are approaching the same things that you have experienced before in a different way. And the biggest, change, um, the biggest uh, challenge for me is uh, not uh, about what is outside, but how you, you approach yourself to what you have experienced. Because having linked uh, together some experiences, you tend to become expert. And when you become expert, you, uh, you become more automatic. Your attitude to the new things uh, are become a more, let's say, less, less creative and inventive because you have developed the tools of reaction. You become, uh, you grow. And uh, the way you see the life is maybe is, is a safer, but is less uh, full of passion. So the challenge is maintain always the enthusiasm, the, yeah. the determination, the passion, to see what yeah. you have done in the past, reproposing yourself differently. Yeah. So my invitation is uh, uh, in every morning we wake up, uh, we impose yourself uh, to depict the world around you in, a, in, in, a, in out of pink. Uh, yes. the, only, the only situation, even if you are in, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a man in, in health. I'm a man yes. uh, yeah. uh, in, uh, I don't have diseases, physical yes. diseases. Uh, yeah. So, um, the, the only limit, uh, apart our imagination, of course, is being in the, the limit of the imagination is, uh, is being in good health because that is the only real limitation to our uh, capability of expression. Uh, despite uh, we have several examples of people with uh, big diseases that despite that uh, see to the life uh, with the right attitude. Uh, so this is a back to going to the beginning of your question. Um, reaction, positive reaction, and what is very important, trust on the support of the people who love you. Yeah. As much you love, as much you give, as much at the proper time you will get back something from the people you had before. Yes, Enrico, this is um, so important because it's so deep. I mean, you said basically something that is also very aligned with uh, myself and what we are doing. I mean, because you said that basically 
in the most dark moment, you get the power to react, you said, and you became more strong. We say, you know, there is, there, there, there is a word that is, is being called anti-fragile. You became anti-fragile, meaning that you became stronger when you have a problem. This is just not only the opposite of robust, but you are more than robust. You you became, it, it's like the Hydra, you know, the, the, the mythical animal that uh, they, they cut you, you know, one head, you become with two heads. They cut you two heads and then you have four heads. So the more they try to cut your head, the more you became even stronger. So this is, a, and you can do this only if you go deep in the dark. Otherwise you will never learn. You will never get a practice. And this is exactly, and, the, and this is exactly what you said. And then again, you said also to be the importance of the people that love you, which is the importance what we say about the community of relate with people that are aligned with you, that uh, you know know deeply you. And this is also exactly the two powers that are maybe the real forces that are you know giving you the yes, the the the, the right way what you what is shown by your you know your path but you what what you are accomplishing and the other thing that is also very important that you said is that um, not lose the power of creativity which is very difficult you know because to be creative means ex by definition to do something that is no that is not being done before otherwise you will not be creative so how you could keep trying to do these things even when you became, you grow. And you know, we are almost, we are on the same age. You are almost 56, 55 years old. And how we can keep trying to do things that seems creative. And someone, you know, something that I think is also come happening to you. Someone meet you and say, listen, but are you not tired to do these crazy things? Are you not tired to keep uh, trying, trying, trying? Why, why, why you don't? calm down, find a peaceful place and uh, stay still. How? I don't know how. Because you said this is the day when we are going to lose our energy, the day that we are going to accept this peaceful, you know, stillness where we don't need to do, be creative anymore. And uh, I agree with you. Maybe we will never arrive at such time. And I hope that we'll never arrive at such time. And uh, Enrico, so just, uh, I would like to, to, to ask you just, um, you know, the last question. We are Italians. This is also a kind of questions that uh, relate to the, the country that we love. You know, this is another, what is the idea that you are, what is your idea about the, Yes, the development of our country. I mean, in I, I'm not going to. I don't. I don't want to make you a kind of political question. No, but uh, you know, being in such revolutionary, I would say, uh, science and touching the power of the power of technology, how you can match this to the slow decadence that you are living in our in our country i'm talking about you know i'm talking from saudita i'm talking from uh, barletta in puglia you are talking in pisa but you know i could say that more or less today italy there is not even any more such distance between north and south italy so and these things is always uh, giving me a thought to you know to to think about and this is what I'm doing, the art club here. And my, my try of the art club is, okay, I will try, I will create this kind of circus, a circus that I'm going to bring here in Puglia. I don't know what is going to happen. I just hope that some seed of these uh, amazing people like you that are coming here, you know, passing here, you know, say, explore, they, they, some seed will rest on the ground and eventually some new New trees could, could grow, but I can tell you it's very difficult if I see what is going on here to even a little seed, you know, keep in the ground. So what is your opinion? What is the opinion of the future of Italy for you? What is your idea? Well, first of all, Antonio, I can say that uh, geopol geo geopolitically talking, 
Italy is uh, is in a very lucky position. Yeah. Uh, nobody can unbold the Alps from uh, from Europe and take Italy in the middle of nowhere. So if you look to the to the to the to, to the heart, uh, Italy is uh, centered in the middle, in the middle of a very protected sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea. So this is an immense asset for us. So Italy, despite whatever whatever is going to happen uh, in a contingency situation, Italy will be always in the center of the world. There are very few places. Uh, that are so lucky like Italy. Okay. Uh, so this, this is, is good. Something, something to start from. So yeah. the, our geopolitical situation um, it is a beautiful country because it's not flat, it's not mountain, it's uh, it's, geo it's, uh, it's a very various country. There are mountains, yeah. there are lakes, there are flats, hills, beautiful sea. If you go to the Seychelles or to Maldives after one week, you get bored. Yeah. If you go in the middle of uh, Illinois, where I've been, in the middle of the Corn uh, Belt, uh, you will get bored as well. Uh, if you go in Kazakhstan, beautiful country, but very respectfully, uh, living, uh, born in Belarus or in Ukraine or in, in this Asiatic land, uh, it, uh, it's uh, something that uh, it's not the best of the of the life. So, yeah, people will be always targeted from people of the outer people to come to Italy. People is the yeah. ideal place to come in rather than go out. Yeah, and uh, Puglia, particularly Puglia. Is, uh, has been uh, has been um, um, the land yeah. of uh, Friedrich II. Uh, yeah. is a, a beautiful land, yeah. and uh, and uh, there is the food, there is yeah. the art. So yeah. our uh, the works. Uh, I'm I'm not scared much about the the industrialization of Italy. This has been. Uh, 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 a process uh, that is not stoppable. It's impossible. Yeah. If I could imagine the land, uh, the Italy I dream, is the Italy uh, of the bio, of the political diversity, of the biopolitical yeah. diversity. Yes. <laughs> yeah. the Italy knew the best, the best, uh, the best moment of his life uh, when was. Uh, 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 when uh, enlightened, uh, enlightened politicians, uh, drivers, rulers, uh, call uh, as you prefer, took care in, in a very detailed way of this miniature, which is Italy. We yes. cannot pretend to to apply the scale of big countries uh, to Italy. We are uh, like uh, very tiny, cute uh, entities with beautiful yes. villages. Yes. So we have to to look uh, to 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 take care of this incredible joy, yes. enhancing the joy, yeah. keeping the water clean, and yeah. there are a lot of jobs uh, related to make money out of the sea, uh, yeah. growing the sea, the yeah. architecture we can be recovered, we can yeah. sell sun, landscape, yeah. smell, food, yeah. taste, yeah. wine. Yeah. And yeah. also very high level technology, high tech technologies, services uh, to uh, introduce uh, the people to read the country. We have to preserve our incredible historical heritage. So we have, there are a lot of skills related to the asset uh, typical of Italy. In Ukraine, maybe they can uh, think about uh, growing uh, this flat land and growing vegetables. We don't have other that than preserve our country, and uh, and uh, there are two winning things that we can apply in this devolution. Rather than this is a devolution uh, is uh, what I see today is a big opportunity for our for our country to repopulate the small villages. Wonderful! There are such such, such jewels abandoned that you know jewels. 
they are jewels abandoned and the, and the people they, they, they're empty and they are jewels really jewels this is exactly something that is always in my mind there are uh, today with uh, thanks to internet uh, uh, the most important the most the biggest issues of the small uh, insulated countries was the communication but now <laughs> you can you can access uh, from everywhere to anywhere so yes. we can uh, be living in a big city it's not uh, necessary anymore uh, we have to, uh, in, and we should find out methods and creative methods to repopulate the the the, the, the more villages on uh, on the on the land. So circular economy is the promise. Circular economy is the what used to be called the, the vita contadina at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly. So <laughs> we re, we recall the old things with the new names, which is fine. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we have to uh, everything related to, to the uh, to the auto production of energy, sanitation of water, production of food, uh, um, and uh, and um, and also finding way to socialize physically with people. There is nothing that is comparable to a fantastic summer night spent in a small square or a small village looking at the sky and playing cards or having games uh, and uh, enjoying your community uh, in, uh, in harmony. Uh, uh, the, the, the only risk uh, to avoid is that uh, being a small village, people talk. So the real <laughs> enemy is uh, the, Privacy. Uh, called the maldicenza. <laughs> the the maldicenza, the, yes. The, like the invidia, the, in, be, yes. the envious. Uh, yeah, everything Indus, related yeah. to, to the bad aspect of our soul. Yes, if we could live in harmony, uh, living yes. in a small village. When I, I've been in India recently, yes, in Mumbai, 30 yes. million inhabitants. Wow, and uh, uh, I had a lecture, and at the end of my lecture, uh, someone asked me. Uh, Mr. Dini, what do you think about the 3D printing uh, uh, under 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 the soil? To make wow. it 3D printed or something like that. Uh, and there was absolutely... What about the 3D printing a skyscraper? And I was... Uh, they are leaving uh, uh, an overpopulation, an overgrow of population. And I, I felt so... <coughs> compa so in compassion for these people who are uh, not in harmony with their land. Um, when uh, yes. a, a population starts to, uh, to condensate on the territory, uh, making multi-story buildings, uh, there is a problem. Yes, uh, yes. This is my opinion. Uh, we, yes. we have to stay on the ground. In India, they are thinking to, uh, to, to, to make a pile a pile of uh, homelessness that are actually living in uh, slums. So the slums are horrible slums, but there is a richness of, uh, the, of the people living in, into the slums. Yes, they are living on yes. The ground. yes. What happens when you make a pile of homelessness in multi-story buildings, 30, 40, 50 story height, you take out them from the land, and, they, yes. and you insulate them into a room and they are all the cell. to the yes. web. And yes. so you can create uh, uh, depression and uh, very badly forms of reaction like terror. Yes, yes, so absolutely. You have, uh, yes, you need I mean, to Enrico, express he... yourself. And yes, we, I are mean, he... made to, we are conceived to, to work the hand, modify the heart, um, how you can say, we are born to for work and do something. Yes. And um, using the yes. brain and the mind and imagination uh, is nice if then you pass to the action of a physical action of doing something. Yes. Otherwise, it can be very dangerous. Yes. Because yes. This uh, is. Yes. Il sonno della ragione produce mostri. Yes, yes. I mean, it's 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 all right, uh, Enrico. This is also why we used to say in the we used to say in the art club that you know we say that tradition 
is uh, very important to understand. In tradition, and you say, right, in Italy, we have such a treasure of, of tradition because it, it, we can go, each one of us can go five minutes walk in each city in Italy, you go in the historical center and you will find this sense of, uh, yes, this sense of tradition, harmony, aesthetic. You see something, you say that basically he, the aesthetic, the beauty, someone said the beauty will save the world. And uh, in Italy, we are this kind of treasury of beauty in any things that, you know, can save can save the world because this is something that I have also noticed like you when I was traveling the world I was always um, you know comparing the development this the new development how was different from the old development of our historical centers that you can you can see harmony everywhere and you don't see such harmony in this uh, such developed you know mass modern civilization that exactly put people from the ground to this kind of cell in this multi-store that they lose touch with uh, their soul basically and i'm very good with you and i thank you for saying this so the last question rico then i let you free for your daily work is uh, i'm gonna ask you some technical question so tell me what is uh, now you're uh, doing and what is your mo main interest in your uh, development? Well, uh, today uh, we are actively promoting uh, uh, my technology, uh, the shape 3D printing uh, uh, in the field of uh, maritime application, coastal wow. restoration. Wonderful. We are printing a set of artificial reefs uh, for a company in the Netherlands, and, uh, and we are uh, actively working a project for underwater gardening uh, wow. in, uh, in some places uh, all in, around the ocean. Uh, we are working also on 3D printing buildings, but uh, I can say that the other method is more successful, is yeah. more understandable and requiring less costly machine. Yeah. So today the topic uh, is uh, printing uh, artificial reefs. Okay. Uh, good. Also statues. We are dealing for making some uh, big statues in um, in Qatar. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we are a bit struggling uh, and uh, having problems in uh, in printing buildings uh, in 3D, as should be my original wish. And yeah. I focus in, in printing house for fish. <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> this is good because maybe 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 the fish maybe the fish will will you know will need us more than you know than uh, the others. But it's 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 right. I mean it's it's. So I also would like to to say something because we at the Art Club we are going to organize a very important conference here in South Italy where Enrico is going to be one keynote speaker. It's going to be a conference a conference when we are willing to to discuss discuss you know how science reason and spirit can find a common approach in the future because you know uh, we see at the arc at least at the arc we see that the, the, those three parts you know science reason and spirit can can have a universal path they 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 they, 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 they need they need to 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 stay together in order to create this kind of uh, what you say the consciousness of uh, development, which can you know say yes, I can use technology, even a powerful technology, 3D printing, maybe not to print two big multi-store building, but maybe to print a more a more nice uh, little you know cheap uh, houses for the you know for the poor people in India because the technology doesn't mean that you have to go in one direction, only one direction. You can also go in other direction, maybe taking, you know, taking back the teaching of the past, as we say, so the tradition, in order to find what you say, this, this harmony. So, Rico, what else? Do you have something more to say? No, just uh, say uh, that I'm um, more than glad to come uh, to the your workshop. Uh, 
at my speech, uh, enter in touch with uh, the other amazing uh, member of your organization, uh, exchange ideas, set collaboration, uh, receive and share inspiration, and uh, finding uh, viable practical ways to, uh, to help our country and uh, to give opportunities to people to enhance their life uh, toward happiness or at least uh, serenity and uh, giving a contribution in, uh, to, to, to this project, centering Puglia in this case, uh, in, uh, in, in the center of uh, in the Mediterranean Sea and attracting interest about uh, our approach, your approach uh, to, uh, to a different model of development of our country. Thank you, Enrico. Thank My you very much that. for to be, you know, to be our host. And uh, see you soon, Enrico. See you soon here. Thank you. See you ciao, ciao, Enrico. Time.